Hi everyone, my name is Sandra. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to share this month's bullet journal setup with you. This is for July and I decided on a koi fish design as you will see. I did not do this in any natural way. So let's just be honest, koi fish are not teal. However, I wanted to make it my own and I felt that it turned out really, really awesome. So on my left page, this is my quote page for my title page, and it says, it takes a strong fish to swim against the current. And I did use a variety of fonts here, just to give it some variety. And I picked, I have a few different colors for my color palette, mostly for my mood tracker, but I did keep with uh, basically two colors. So one is a teal, and the other is a black brush pen. So I did use a Crayola Super Tips. That is my main color for the month. And this quote is by John Crow. And on the right page, I decided to just draw a circle. So I think when I originally drew this out in pencil, I used the bottom of a coffee mug. <laughs> but then I actually used my stencil to make sure that it was perfectly circular. And I wrote in July, and of course I am using foligraphy here, so drawing the downstroke separate, not actually using a brush pen. And I really like the way this looks this month. I've done a lot of um, cross hatching for backdrops and also a lot of foligraphy. So I decided to draw two koi fish swimming around this circle. And it's not exactly realistic looking. Like I was mentioning, the colors are definitely not realistic. But that is part of why I like this design and part of why I like art and bullet journaling because honestly, you can make it any way that you want. It's all up to the imagination. So with these pens, I will leave everything listed down below in the description box. And I do erase as I go. I'm going to leave this part in. I want it to be as realistic looking as possible so you guys can see what goes into this setup. This setup did take a while. I think I took a couple of days to draw it out beforehand. So some of the spots on the fish I color in with the teal color and then other spots I do in black. So I think I used a 03 Sakura Pigma Micron to draw most of the drawing parts itself. There's some areas where I left it 05 and some 02 which would be for the small numbers in the calendars that you'll see. And this is my Tombow Food no Suke. I use it to color in all of the black spots on the fish. So this next page is normally my large monthly calendar. So this is one of the things I decided to change. So instead of having the whole double spread as a calendar, I decided to make a tiny calendar on the left hand page here and underneath I wanted to change it to important dates. So my, my plan here is to write out the dates and then go ahead and highlight them on the actual calendar and I think it just looks a little bit more neat. Before I was kind of going back and forth between writing in bill dates and appointment dates on the actual physical calendar and it just got to be so messy looking in the end that I didn't even like it anymore. So I wanted to change it and again this was my month to play with different layouts and to add new spreads and see how much use I actually get out of them. So here I am just coloring in the koi fish. And as you will see throughout these spreads, usually, and I say this generally for every month, that the monthly page 
and the monthly calendar are usually the most decorated, but I do decide to decorate the habit tracker and mood tracker a little bit more. So this next page I decided to call my July events. So I decided to add the dates along the left hand side of the page, whereas before I generally have it like a line down the center and then I have room on the left and right to write in important dates. So I decided to try out this layout instead to see if I like it better. If I don't, I'll just switch back next month. Moving on to this next spread, I've decided to call this Mum Life, and this I actually got from Claudia Joseph. I'll link her channel at the end of this video so you can check her out. She's awesome. And again, it is another calendar. So this one I've included chores and bath time, and now I totally know what some people might say about the spreads I've decided to include for this month is that it is it seems like overkill and I'd have to agree and the only reason I say this is because this is my test month so what I've decided a lot of these spreads I'm adding have come from my happy planner and my Erin Condren and I want to put everything into one notebook so I want to see what it's like in my bullet journal and if I use all of the spreads for some reason great and I'll continue them forward for August and if I don't if there are some that I'm just feel like they're not working I'm just going to get rid of them so really this is kind of like an experimental month so for the next page I have my July goals so I've included my health my family and personal and then also this is my monthly task page as well Now my next couple of spreads, this is all about tracking like the background work that goes into my channel. So the left page again, another calendar. I really like keeping these things separate. I don't want to have just one huge calendar like I was saying before. It just turned into this huge mess on one page and I really want to actually keep track of it separate. So I've decided to include work goals on this spread here so I have video ideas at the bottom underneath the calendar so that's the idea just like vague ideas that kind of pop into my brain and then these two spreads are meant to work together so I do have my YouTube tracker my growth tracker down in the corner and the right hand page is going to be my actual schedule so I was thinking of using the calendar on the left as a schedule where I could take little pieces of post-it note and just kind of move them around, but then I figured the calendar wasn't quite big enough. I might do that for next month, we'll see, and get rid of the kind of schedule thing on the right. So here I've got my filming and my posting schedule. So this is, I don't want to say written in stone. Um, it does make it kind of messy if I decide to change my mind. I don't want to white it out after. So again, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but we're going to just try it for this month and see. These next two spreads I did pull from my Happy Planner actually. So I wanted a spot to track my bills. So this left hand page is another calendar and I can highlight the dates if there's important bills I want to add on here and at the bottom I wrote the pay dates. And the right hand page is my tracker for all of the bills that I have. So I actually found this was really helpful in my happy planner because sometimes um, I do have a lot of bills to pay and um, it's, it's not even, it's so hard to keep track, especially actually all of the streaming services that come out automatically. 
even though they're automatic, I like to know what's coming out of my account, so I want to write them down. I always write down when they're due and if I've paid them and how much they are. So I do find that this spread is very, very handy. I ended up switching to a Zebra Mild Liner brush pen here. This is the light teal blue shade and I decided to make it look like an expense spread so I colored every second line. The next spread is my July reading list and my July watch list. So this is just a spread. I'll probably continue this going forward. Just a spot, kind of like a brain dump but only for books and TV shows. The next spread is my July stationery and makeup. I used to have this as a yearly or I guess quarterly spread and because it changes so quickly I do purchase a lot of products for my channel and because I am a stationery and makeup nerd so I wanted a spot to write this down monthly instead. Not only do I change my mind a lot of times but once I buy the product I cross it off and then it fills up quite quickly so I need to have a lot of room. This is my July weight log. So now a lot of these next spreads are ones that I have continued monthly. These are the, my tried and true that I'll never give up because I find them so useful. So the July weight log, I know that people say you shouldn't track your weight every day and I don't track it and obsess over it. I track it every day to see a trend because I wanna see that line, whether it's going up or down and to know what I need to do in order to um, make it go down, if at all possible. I decided to include a gratitude log this month. It's nice to remind ourselves um, what we're grateful for, just to stay positive, especially in times like this. I decided to draw a fish at the bottom. This next spread is my dream log and I think for June I had made it into just one page. This one I decided to finally do a double page again, mostly because it fit in with my even page numbers for this spread for like the entire month. But also I'm just hoping that I can recall my dreams. I don't know, ever since I've had my daughter I can't seem to recall a single dream and I'm pretty sure it's because I'm just not getting any sleep or I'm not waking up in the middle of a REM cycle. This is my Doodle a Day spread. It's very, very simple. Meant intentionally to do that because I basically draw a picture for every day, so that is kind of the whole point. And last month, or currently, I am doing my SpongeBob SquarePants theme, and I decided. <laughs> I'm being a total copycat. I'm going to take Cindy Gunthart Baldo's, um, not her ideas, like not her actual drawings, but she has these little papers with different types of drawings on them for every month, and she calls it her uh, doodle challenge, and I really like that idea, so I might um, kind of go along with that. I'm not sure what theme I'll do this month, but I will be sure to post it on Instagram, so if you're curious, please check that out. This next spread is, of course, my habit tracker. So I was going to switch it up, I had been watching 
Planning with Kay. I will link her channel at the end of this video as well if you're curious. She has some wonderful ideas so I advise you to check that out. She had some really good habit tracker ideas. They were monthly and weekly habit trackers and I think I might change to a weekly habit tracker next month. I'm not quite sure. I haven't made up my mind but I had already pre-drawn this before I had watched that video so I decided to just stick with my regular monthly plan I guess. So I do squish in 12 different habits on this page and it looks a little squishy. There's not really room for doodles or anything but the mood tracker on the next page does make up for that. And I do not include the dates on here. I just go in order of when the next date would be, if that makes sense, because it's just too much to write 1 to 31 on each of these little squares. So this is my mood tracker and I decided to draw koi fish all over the page and I numbered their spots I guess or their color their different markings 1 to 31 and then the idea is on each of those days according to the legend on the right hand corner if I'm happy it will be the lighter color and when I'm more not happy it will be the darker color I believe that's the coloring system and scheme I worked out. Because I didn't want the black to cover up the entire little unhappy face, I just outlined that one in black instead of coloring it in. This next spread is my weekly dashboard. And I decided to stick with a template that works for me. I do like to change it up every week just so I don't get bored. And what it, I mean, that happens so quickly, you guys. So I do like to change it up. I like the color change at least. And again, I do have the cross etching basically everywhere as a backdrop. I even included it on the circles for the dates on my little event taskbar. So I usually include, like the four things I include basically are events, tasks, groceries, and meal planning. And if I do have room left over, I like to include a next week section and sometimes a note section. But I wanted to include a few pictures here, so I got rid of the note section and just included some koi fish on this page and the next.
This last weekly spread before I get into the dailies is a YouTube weekly check-in slash spread. So I've never included this in my bullet journal before. This again is pulled over from my happy planner. This is where I'd keep track of all of this stuff. And again, it seems like overkill because I have another growth tracker, but this is again done on a weekly basis, as well as subscriber count, watch hours, and view time. And then I call it a plan of attack. So I was debating between this template and a different template. So basically, if I write out each of these items, so for instance, one is like film the actual video, another one is editing or writing out a description or uploading to my computer, uploading to YouTube, etc., etc. I have to write it out multiple times for each video. So it kind of sounds like overkill and I did have a better template drawn out so I wouldn't have to rewrite the same video multiple times, but I didn't like the way it looked. And I'm going to try it the week after this to see if that works better because then I'm not rewriting the same video title. Um, the only thing I could come up with is I will be probably using short form for the videos. But that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's crazy. There are a lot of different spreads. I hope some of these kind of catch your eye and maybe motivate you to try new layouts or new spreads. Whatever helps you in your daily life is what I always say. So we're going to do a flip through of the entire month and I just want to take the time to tell you guys how much I appreciate you. I'm so glad that you have subscribed and that you watch my channel and watch my videos. If there's anything else that you are interested in, please go ahead and let me know because I'd be curious to know what you would like to see next. So before I go ahead and do the final flip through, I just highlight some of the dates on each of the calendars. So now we're going to go ahead and do the flip through. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're new here, I'd love if you subscribed. And don't forget to click the little bell notification button so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.